All righty, guys, we got just about the right time to start our session. Uh, let me read for you. Uh, good morning to the 36th Caller Lab Convention. Today is April the 7th, 2009, and this session is called Using Your Music. My name's Elmer Sheffield. I produce ESP Square Dance Records, and with me, the world-famous Wade Driver. He's producer of... of uh, rhythm records. He knows everything, so when our session's over, he'll be glad to answer any questions that you need. This session is being taped, so it, when we do get into a question and answer period, we need you to use the microphone so that it, it will be on the on the tape, okay? All right, this morning, uh, we kind of put our heads together, and Wade's going to do really the, the the heart of this session because he's probably as good at it as, as anybody at, at arranging music and using his music, and he'll tell you a lot of things that I'm sure will help you. Uh, what I'd like to do is just start off and kind of give you an, an overview uh, of the music that we use, uh, let you know that, of course, as we produce music, um, there are different styles of music we use. We use... Uh, Country uh, songs, we use uh, rock and roll songs. Um, of course, alternative music has come along with different Dixieland, uh, just about everything. Most of our music is recorded in 2-4 in, uh, time, which doesn't mean a lot and, and shouldn't mean a lot to you, as long as it has a beat and you can dance to it. But 2-4 uh, is a predominant, like a boom chuk boom chuk boom chuk then we go in and, and we do some 4-4 four, four things that still have the basic beat, but we kind of leave off the chuck part. So we got a boom, 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 boom. Uh, most music is, is recorded around 128 to 130 uh, to make it comfortable for you to dance to. Uh, of course, when you call your dance, it's easy to to set tones and set moods in the dance by the type of music you use and the way you use it. And that's going to be Wade's main thing, is to tell you how, how to use the music. Uh, it, you can take one, one square dance song and two different guys can call it, and it can actually sound like a, a complete a different uh, interpretation of it because uh, to be effective, you have to use that music the right way. Um, I have, I, I don't use a computer, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm, I'm still the old old guy that puts them warped up scratchy 45s on and, and, and plays them, you know. So I don't know a whole lot about using the computer. Uh, I was going to, I had an idea of maybe playing you some different styles of, of hoedowns. For instance, we do, we do bluegrass hoedowns that have a lot of banjo fiddle, a lot of upbeat. Uh, then we do, a lot of callers even use uh, round dance music for, for patter records, and that's, and that's fine, too. That's a little more uh, laid back, uh, subtle, not, not quite so much boom, chuk, boom, chuk. And then in the last year or so, of course, we've got into the, uh, I guess you call it alternative or, or, or what, whatever you want to call it, but it, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> But most of that, and there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you guys are using it. It's fine. It has a lot, most of it has a lot of downbeat and usually some voices, uh, some some weird things in the background, whatever. But it, it creates a different mood uh, when you're calling to it. And, and, of course, none of us want to go and, and do a two-and-a-half, three-hour dance and use nothing but bluegrass hoedowns. I mean, we might be happy with it, but but the the, the, uh, the change of mood is what makes the dance really good. So those things have changed. We we do in singing calls. We we do here as I already told you. We do a lot of country stuff, uh, a lot of bluegrass stuff, uh, Dixieland, uh, rock and roll. We, all these things can be done, and people ask us sometimes, how do you how do you make a square dance out of that? Well, the bottom line is we have to start out with that 
with that beat, and it has to be, um, as I already told you, 128 to 130 is the most comfortable uh, timing to use. We we have done records that are, are a little slower and some that are a little faster. It depends on the music and the song because you want the dancer to be able to dance to it. But uh, everyone will feel different, and they, and they sound different. And, you know, there have been some records done over the years that have changed. Like I remember Chaparral did a record called uh, King of the Road, I believe, and it started out – the, the the opener as we call it number one number one was a was a four four time really and then when the first figure came up they changed into a two four time and and it made it sound like all of a sudden you had to start running when down deep it was the same beat the same put your foot down every time but it sounded completely different if you ever listen to that record you'll see what I'm, I mean it's just just that change made the whole whole record sound like something different. <coughs> but anyway, after we get through with the with the presentation here, we're going to have some time for questions and answers. We'll try to answer anything we can. We we might may not have all the answers, but I guarantee you, we got enough BS between the two of us that we'll tell you something. We'll make up something if we have to. <coughs> but it, without further ado, let me turn this over to Wade. And he's going to go through some music and some different styles and, and different way he presents his. He, I, he's not going to tell you all his secrets. I can tell you that now. But he'll tell you a lot of them. So uh, here's Wade Driver. Thanks, Silver. Do you, could you have my other end of my little thing here? Yeah, let me plug that in here. At least today I remember my laptop. Yesterday the session I was sitting there four minutes to go and I looked down and I thought, I got no music. It was back in my room. But... Um, for those, anybody who may have been through one of my schools, you've seen this part of this selection of music thing before, but, uh, I've kind of adjusted as time goes along and modernize it, but it still doesn't change. I, I do, I have to, you know, I love him. We've been knowing each other since he still got his, but since I had hair, but one of the things, his first sentence I have to take issue with. Music is the most important part of your business. I'm sorry, because I'm prejudiced, but how many of you guys have, uh, all done any work around the house that required a nut, nut and a bolt? Anybody? Anybody ever use it? All right. Now why would you go to do that with a pair of pliers? How would you, why would you go to your car to take out your spark plugs with a pair of pliers when you've got a ratchet wrench that'll fit? All right. Why do you use music and don't know what it does? That's amazing to me. All right? It just absolutely astounds me. You got all this great music. You say, well, did you hear that thing in that third time through? No. Did you listen? No. What did you do? I wanted to sing. I wanted to hear my voice. You know, the, the second most popular thing that people like to hear is the sound of their own voice. Most popular thing is the sound of their own name. And that's fine. I got no actual ground with that. But, you, can, you know, and, uh, I, I won't say all. I'll say 98% of square dance callers are not the world's greatest singers. We're just not. Lord knows I'm not. You know, mine went out through a rock and roll microphone about 35, 40 years ago. It went south a long time. You do enough James Brown and your voice is history. I promise you, okay? But, so you have to sing commercial. And in order to be successful singing commercial, uh, You've got to use your music. Even the guys who are in Vegas, Celine Dion or, or Neil Diamond or people like that that are just great, one of the reasons they're great is the use of their music, and they they use it to understand it. Now, if you're going to – I'm just going to go down my little list thing here. The problem I've got is is that if this, this session is about four and a half hours too short, so we'll try to do as much as I can. But so what I'm going to concentrate on today is emulating the pop singer, all right? And try to get as close to it as you can. And I've got, I've got a, uh, a, a, for a good example, okay? Now there's a tune, and it's an ESP record. We were just talking about it. The nice thing about the computer is that I can change the key. God bless it, you know, because when I smoked, boy, I could hang notes down so low you couldn't believe it. I quit smoking, but I lost the whole bottom end of my range. Now it just gets boring, 
You know, I got to sing one little place. But their music, anybody done any Josh Turner tunes, like Long Black Train or Your Man? If you can't go down and hit that note, why are you messing around with the song? All right. I on on Long Black Train, I just flat can't hit it. Now now like what's his name? Uh Tom Roper. He just nails that thing, all right? He's too healthy, he needs to smoke. You know. <laughs> all right? But he just nails those tunes. I can't, but on on this song Your Man, all right, I, I can raise the pitch one little notch and I can go down, can't do it really, really well, but enough to be effective and that's that, if there's anything I want to get across today, use your music to make you effective and then emulate the original tune. Now, you can do all sorts of things. This is just a love song. As long as it starts off, play band. I use a grand square, but what if you want to do as long as? Baby, lock the door and turn the light down. You got them. You got every lady in that room. It's done deal, okay? And you just go in and sing the song. But if you don't, if you start off, play band. Four ladies chained across that ring. It just, it, it's, it, it works, but is it good? No. Right? Is it the best you can do? No. You need to sound like the song, right? Now we have a lot of tunes we cut, old bluegrass tunes and things. You can just hash those things to your heart's content because nobody ever heard them to begin with. Okay? And that's all good and well. But if you, if this is a song people know, and my goodness, Josh Turner was playing every five minutes on the radio. Why would you get up and sing a song different than he does? Okay? To me, one of the most biggest compliments I get, somebody comes and says, boy, you sang that as well as whoever the original was. You know it's a lie, but boy, it feels good. You know? And, and that's what you want to do. So what I want to try to do is, is get across you to do the songs like they were originally done. All right, there's, uh, just pick a tune. All right, Elmer's brought up a good one. We cut, cut years and years. 1978, I think we did this thing. It's called All Wrapped Up in You. Where you just don't have to work very hard. And that's what you want to do. Now, it was originally a Don Gibson tune, all right? And he didn't work hard. His music worked for him. When I cut it, I didn't want to work hard either. So all you, and it, catch this. This is the music working. Circle that. You. You are my good time. Left out of man, do side do, men start left, turn through at home, left out of man, swing your own promenade, cause I'm all wrapped up in you. I didn't count them exactly, but it's close to 17 syllables is all I said in that whole thing. But the music does all the work, and I did it just exactly like the original tune. Now, if you don't, I'm not going to have you raise your hands, but if you don't, if you have a song you want to call and you have never heard the original pop tune or don't take the time to go do it, you're doing yourself a disservice. You truly are doing yourself a disservice because... You know, I don't care even if you're a guy doing a girl song or whatever, you need to emulate the style. For example, and, and I know Deborah Carroll Jones does a, just a fantastic job of this, but when I went to see the movie Chicago and the first time I saw Catherine Zeta Jones sprawl herself across the piano, I thought, I'm hooked. I got to sing the song. No matter what, okay? Now, it's a girl's song, but don't mean you can't sing it if you use that same inflection. Great piece of music on Chicago country. But you gotta kinda hook it up. Ah, come on, baby. We're Panther Town. And all that jazz. Now, why would you want to sing on top of that? But I've heard it. And this just kills me. Circle F. Well, come on, baby. We're gonna paint that town. And all that jazz. My goodness. You know, come on, man, <laughs> listen to the song, right? And that, the, what I want to get across today, and if you notice, one of the handouts is a phrasing sheet. The problem we have is not on the opener, the break, or the, as the problem as I see it. Not that I'm opinionated, but the problem as, the, the problem as I see it is not on the opener, the break, and the closer. 
it's on the figures. You know, people will sing this beautiful song, and then all of a sudden the figure starts, and it goes to a warm place in a handbasket. I don't understand that. now. And I use one of our songs just as an example because I put it on the phrasing because it's so easy. Where's 147? It was here when I came in. There it is right there. Good. This is also another good thing. We recorded Amarillo by Morning much too fast. We recorded like 131 or 2. I don't know. It was like, like we had to go to the bathroom, so we was in a hurry. Right. Well, the computer, you can slow it down. I slowed mine down to 127 and just left it there. You can get it wherever you want. But here's what I hear too often, all right? And I'll skip along, but they'll do a circle left, whatever. Amarillo by morning, they're just singing that song. And all of a sudden, we get to hear. Amarillo, I'm on my way. Hit couple going to promenade halfway round the ring. Come down the middle and square through. Get four. Why do people do that? I don't understand. It, and and one of the reasons is they said, well, you, how do you sing the song? You syllableize. That goes along with synchronicity. All right, I got to syllableize. All right, you take the syllables from the song and you replace it with choreographical syllables. Choreographical syllables. All right, and that's basically all I did here. Where you go, Amarillo by morning, up from San Antonio, head you promenade halfway, square through counter four. Same thing. Plug in the holes. It takes a little work. God forbid, call us to work at their craft. All right, but it takes a little work. If you're going to practice, practice smart, so that if you're going to sing this thing. And it should, it should be a song all the way through. I'm one of the biggest arguments my father and I ever had. Way back in 57, I got up and did a singing call, my very first one. He said, you can't do that. And I said, what? He said, well, you're supposed to call that and not sing it. I said, what's it called? He said, it's called a singing call. I said, yes, sir. And I sang it. And we never agreed on that, ever. All right? Hit you promenade halfway. Square through count to four. All the way and you swing through Boy, run right in the Ferris wheel Square through, give me three-quarter round Swing the corner promenade And let the band play, you know Gosh, we spent lots of money, Elber and I do And Tony and Jerry do to, to have them play in those cracks, all right And then the guys just sing over the top of it And it's really kind of tough, all right Now and I know we have a rule when, when we record, I get in the studio in my last session because my studio got shut down. They went out of business. So I'm now I'm driving Elmer and his studio engineered nuts because I'm going to Florida and I'm cutting over there. But I get in the studio and I lay this stuff down and I look at the pickers and I said, now here's the deal. And I write the arrangement. We got everything done. And I said, y'all watch me. If my mouth, when we got, we have lead pickers and we have fill pictures or fill or chases, call them what you want. I said, now you guys who are playing the fields, the guys playing the lead piece of cake, playing the melody, all right? They can get out of my way. The guys playing the fields, if my mouth ain't moving, one of y'all better be playing something, all right? Because when you shut up, the only thing the dancer hears is either a fill instrument or if he isn't playing, he hears, boring, all right? Now, there are some songs that are incredibly popular that you have to do all the work. And here's the... Uh, here's, a, I guess, the prime example because there's nothing in there but rhythm. And yet it's incredibly popular because a couple of guys on the East Coast, Tony and somebody else, came up and they found a way to use this record and make it popular. Now, this and this. It's a great rhythm track. Well, a poor little lady gonna promenade the gutter once in around the ring. Why don't you get back home and swing that lady go round and around you swing it. Join hands and circle to the left and move it, roll it round and go up. Do an element. I don't want to work that hard. I'll tell you what. But it's a great piece of music and if you find one like that and you know it works on the floor, then it's worth the work, all right? But I'd hate to do that ten times a night. My, oh Lord, that's, it's, you know. But when you find one like this worthwhile, fine. But if you don't, now there are tunes, and I haven't gotten a whole lot of mine because I, I know what mine does. But I want you to hear some other stuff, and y'all think I'm gonna do all rhythms? Why not? Here's one right here that is one of the most faithful. It sticks to the original tune about as well as any I've ever heard, and I love it. Now, it has a problem. 
<laughs> Boy, does it have a problem. But the problem is with the lyrics. Because there's a place that says, here's to the past, she can kiss my glass. Now, you know all of our people are hard of hearing. All right? And you know, and you know when you sing it, you know what they're going to think you said. All right? And I'm just not going to do that, boy. You know? But I'm not going to throw away a piece of music that's as good as this thing here that Junior did. Just because of that, I can write new words. You know, words are a piece of cake. You come up with something. But listen to how, anybody y'all familiar with, um, Joe Nichols? Joe Nichols is a singer that, if you want to hear Willie Nelson, listen to one of his songs. You want to hear Merle Haggard, listen to a different one of his songs. The man can sing anybody you want to hear. Got an incredible country voice. I don't think I like country music, but I like Joe Nichols. But catch this. This is exactly like the original. Listen to this music. Old ladies chain, you turn that girl, you roll away, circle round. Oh, they're gonna roll away, circle and go. Left alley man in your wheel. I think the devil drives a coupe de ville. I watch him drive away over the hill. Not against her will. I got time to kill. Down in Broken Hartsville. Now, it just, it is, it, 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 it is so much fun when you hear that pop record and say, I can go sing that. I don't have to change nothing. You know, just play it. That's what we try to do in the studio. And I'm sorry, and I don't want to pick on anybody, but we go out and hear you call our song. And early on, it was good enough because you bought it. That ain't good enough no more. You know, you've been doing it too many years, and you ought to be doing it better. I'm sorry. It's just always to it. Now, listen to this middle break. Do you steal my? Do you steal my? There it is. Okay, now. But here's the middle break. Circle F. Here's to the girl who really rocked my world. But that ain't the way the words go. Okay? I <laughs> just can't do it that way. Right. You circle left. Here's to the past. She can kiss my glass. I promise you half the employer going to say, what? <laughs> you know, so you can't. But it's so exciting to sing a song that way, you know. So... Uh, and I, and we, we just, we just did a, a whole bunch of, some of y'all have heard some of the new stuff and some of you hadn't. But, like this, and I'm using, I use Elmer Studio and I've got a Nashville studio I did. And this guy in Nashville I never worked with before. And we finally got a mix that I approved. It was the 15th. And he, I said, I want to apologize. He said, don't. He said, I never had nobody that wanted to get it right before. And I said, well, because I called him and I said, because uh, when I first called him, I said, I said, I want to send you some arrangements and stuff like that. And I said, so he got in, he called me on the phone. He said, you work kind of different than everybody else. I said, you think? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I said, but if you're going to do it, let's do it right. And I'm very proud of this. But when I went to L.A. and we did the vocals, Mike System did the backup vocal on this, and they mixed it and sent it to me, fortunately, in two-track. They sent it to me with the backup vocal as a backup vocal. Well, this is a Bellamy Brothers tune. It wasn't a backup vocal. It was a duet. Now, here's the hint. If you sing off-key, you do not want to use the duet part because Mike ain't off-key. And nothing sounds worse for a lead singer than if the backup singer is right on and you're not. It sounds like two cats fighting on the back fence. So, unfortunately, in today's world, with CDs and with MP3s, you can use it with the harmony, without the harmony, however you want. But this is one of the most true to the, well, one of the true to the originals that we got that I like because it, it's exactly like the song. And you listen on the radio, it's just exactly like that. Now listen to the field. Redneck girl likes to cruise and daddy's pickup truck steal. Left island man, no side door with your own. Alamant left and you weave. Here he comes. She's going to show one old boy that weekend moon. And I pray that someday I can find me a redneck girl. Now that's what you want because when you ain't singing, you want somebody playing something. Now, as we go through this, the next one we're going to have a different lead, a piano lead, but we're going to have a guitar chase or fills. No, it's a guitar lead. I'm sorry. With electric piano fills. 
Now, what the dancer hears besides your voice is this. And it makes it musical. All right? Now, that's what you want. Also, you want, and one of the things I didn't get into heavy here, and like I said, we don't have all that much time. So, intros and tags. Let's do a test. Do, do, do. This is called Name That Tune. All right? Here we go. All right. You ready? That's all you get to hear. All right. All right. Now. I'm really making a point here. It was here when I came in. There we go. My point is, if you can recognize it, so can the dancers. It makes them feel good. Every single time one of these songs come on, it triggers a memory in one of those dancers' minds, all right? And it's a feel-good 90% of the time, all right? And this is what you want to do because if you can reach out and control the emotions of these dancers, they'll do anything you want, all right? But if you don't, all right, if you say, these guys have said, I'm going to make them happy in your dreams, all right. If they're kind of down and feeling kind of lazy or whatever, you better get down there with them and lift them up slowly because you're not going to jerk them up by the chin strap. It isn't going to happen. All right. Now, uh, we went through this thing at, at Seal Peak the other day, and, and but there are things that you can use musically that you have to be careful. Make sure you learn. All right. You make sure you know. Um, here's the other one I was going to talk about. Um, and... and <laughs> This is one I was trying to demonstrate yesterday that you can use on here, and the set wasn't working well. And I was on the end of Cheeseburger by In Paradise that you can use for emphasis, but you got to be near this thing up here because your bass uh, control here and your treble is a two-track equalizer. That's all it is, all right? And if you need more treble, don't turn the bass down, turn the treble up. If you need less bass, turn the bass down and leave the treble alone, all right? So you just have to, that's an experimental thing. But say I wanted to emphasize something, for example. I want to hear it, all right? It's not much, but it gets like the dancers go... They make, they make, but dancers make weird body movements when they're on the floor, if you've ever, ever noticed, you know. And uh, that, But if you know it's there, for example, is anybody familiar with the uh, the two uh, really strong tom-tom licks on Proud Mary? No. I'm surprised. I'm about there. Okay. Now I'm trying to remember where they are. This guy I haven't called in a thousand years. <laughs> Oh, it's the closer. That's where it is. There we go. All right. It's in the middle, right in the middle of the closer. Whatever. Join up your hands, circle left to go around the ring. I'm gonna let that corner lady weave around the ring. Right there. Now, it's a small little thing, but I wanted to jump out and nail you right between the eyes. And I'm, I'm back to where if you don't know the song, you're not going to do that, okay? And there's, and I just mind, I've got it, because someone said the other day, do you do all rhythm in most of your dances? I've got boring. I don't think so, you know, because I don't care who you are, you tend to signature your music. And if you start to use a whole dance of rhythm to me would be not good, because they're going to, no matter how hard you try to vary the rhythms, it's going to start sounding alike. All right, and so you try to use a variation. Uh, there's one that's not going to be out till next month, but it's true to the original. The story and I were arguing last night. He says it's Reba, and I thought it was Winona. I'm not real sure which one it is, but whichever it is, it's good because it's like the original. Now you're going to hear songs like this and think, I can't do that because it's not boom chug, boom chug, boom chug. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you get those. What I do, and I hear one of those like beautiful noise, whatever. I listen to it and I think, how many callers are going to do this? Now, that's one, assuming it's good music up front with a difficult arrangement. I listen to how many callers are going to do this? And I'm thinking, not many. I'm going to learn it. All right? For example, some people do all that jazz, but not all that well. All right? That's one of you want to learn. This is another one that 
is worth the time it takes to do. But you can start off a song with full A's, chain three quarters, and roll away, circle left, and guys, I don't do that. All right? But you can't. Now listen how true this is to the original tune. Because it's, it's soft and hard. Four ladies chain, three quarter round. You roll away, circle left, go around. Uh-huh. This is where it's gonna hurt. Elemental left and weave the ring. I can't even get the blues. Now you just kind of cruising along, you know, this thing. Then you hit the middle break, right? It's now. This is what I was telling Jerry. See, he says, you hush where? I said, I hush when I say, I'll man, weave the ring. Shut my mouth. He said, I didn't try to. We'll, we'll do that. Catch this. This is so cool. Now. Can't even get the boots. Well. Four ladies promenade. One time and get on a home and swing. Join up your hands. You circle around. Left eye lead man and weave the ring. And if you don't listen to that, you have no reason to know it's there. But if you play with it and you practice it with it, I try to find ways if these guys are going to play that well, I ain't going to sing on top of them. But again, it's learning your music and knowing where it comes in, comes out, and so on and so forth. Uh, but again, phrasing, 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 phrasing. And I don't care what it is. Let's see. I pick a, pick a song, but you have to know, know the song. For example, how many of you guys know Leonard Skinner's Give Me Three Steps? I mean, really know the song. All right. It's a great piece of music if you learn it. All right. It's a tuper tune. But I've, I've listened to people call it like that. They have never heard that song. All right. Now, being from Georgia, next, you know, next to Alabama, I heard most of Leonard Skinner's stuff, but there's songs like that. How many have ever heard Doris Day actually sing Everybody Loves a Lover? You should. It's terrific. It's a great tune. Okay. How many, buddy? How many of you guys know who Bertie Higgins is? <laughs> but you know Key Largo, and that's his one hit. But he's got another hit called Just Another Day in Paradise. He's got a whole album that's incredible. Uh, unfortunately, Key Largo is the only one it, that really got we got anywhere. Right. Uh, I had to laugh. When we first cut Summertime, I called Pat Barber and I said, God, we got a great cut, cut on Summertime. He said, oh, Eddie Cochran. I said, no, not Eddie Cochran. Porgy and Bess. He said, what's Porgy and Bess? I, I said, Kids drive me nuts, all right, you know. But but the, the point I'm making is what most guys do is we, which my father did, and he and I went round and round. And, I, and he finally came out a little bit. Is it you're a square dance caller? And you can just call patter all you want. But when you do a singing call, sing the singing call. There's no reason not to sing it, including the figures and everything else. And um, it requires that you learn the original tune in order to do it. Now, going from that into one other thing, and that is using phrasing from the music itself. It, similar to what we did. One of my played yesterday, and you really couldn't hear it too well. I'm going to do it again here now. It's called Come to Me. All right? And on the middle break... All right. Uh, for, for example, do you all know where it come, come to me was written? There was a fellow named Roy Head out know, of Houston wrote that and recorded it, and it was a religious song, and it changed into a love song, whatever. And then Ernie Kinney recorded it on hi hat, God forever ago, I suppose. And, uh, and it's, it's not a bad tune, but it's a great. How many of you guys ever worked together with other callers? Ever do that? All right, it's the greatest thing in the world, but you need to plan ahead because if you're going to work with two callers. And, you know, particularly if you're talking about traveling callers who are used to working alone all the time, when you get on stage, you have to kind of sacrifice your style to find a place in the middle. So you all, because all it counts is the product, right? And you get some callers go up there and they'll say, I'm going to sound good. I don't care what they do, you know, and then the whole product goes bad, right? So you have to work together. Well, this is one of those tunes that guys can do together because it's kind of an innocuous little tune, okay? No big deal, right? It's just a straight up stuff. You know? Four ladies chain across that ring, but it's easy harmony, and that's what you want, it's easy harmony. But when you hit the middle break, it's got a guitar pit thing, it's super. If you ever need true love, come to me. Four ladies chain. Chain them home. That's all you have to do. Circle that. Now, the problem we have is callers can't keep their mouth shut that long. 
You know, because I know it's hard for me, I promise you that. But you think, God, I ought to be saying something. No, no, just let this, let the stuff play and let it do. It is so cool to do that, you know. And if you will go through all of your records, different ones that you really like. All right, for example, anybody do down in the boondocks on Royal? Anybody do that? Anybody know there's a flute in there? Do you ever let the flute play? That's kind of a neat thing to do, you know. We don't have many songs with a flute in it, okay? Anybody, uh, oh, there's, there's all sorts of things here. Um, all right, anybody ever do Hummingbird on Chinook? Or do that? Are you aware that the guitar fill is in two different places on a middle break versus a closer? And if you jump on top of it, it'll eat your lunch and the closer will want it. <laughs> it'll do it. So you gotta go through and listen. And they're both good, but they're different. Alright, for example. I'm tired of living in this one horse town. Went to the station, flagged the hummingbird down. Alabama left that corner, no see your own. Alabama. He don't play it in that same place in the closer, does he? He plays it different. And you need to know that because it will have an effect on the dancer. You think, big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. Because that's like saying they should. everybody should sing all the songs alike. The dancer can tell the difference. They don't know it. If you go ask them, say, what did I just do? Oh, oh. Did you like it? Yeah. Or what did I do? Did you like it? Yeah, it's all right. I hate to get up. Yeah, it's all right. That just drives me nuts because I'm not doing my job, all right? So listen to these things and you and you find out. Also, to do it, <laughs> do it like it's written, all right? Uh, but then you got some that doesn't matter. Uh, where is that? Where is that thing they did on Red Boot that was so cool? And then it becomes a matter. Any of y'all done that thing called This Little Light of Mine on Red Boot, the new release? Oh, he should. Oh, he should. <laughs> it's so cool. But it comes on with, I don't know if I have the original intro. It has an intro that I could go to sleep, take three naps, have a cup of coffee, get up, and then start to call. Because it just goes forever. Most guys love it. And they'll either preach or they'll do a slow grand square because it goes, don, don. And I thought, you know, as a matter of fact, my wife and I went around around there. She said, I like that. I said, I don't. And I'm calling. And I'm, she's gone. So I just went in on my program. I just cut it off. But the song itself is cool because you can do anything you want to do. All right? You want to preach? You can preach. You want to sing it slow, slow, fast. doesn't matter. This is a cool song. Oh, it does have the intro. This is the intro. Now, they're standing there just looking at me, and I'm looking at them, and I don't preach very well, and I don't see the point in this thing. I have another said this called short that I took it off of, but the song is great. I mean, I could have been saved four times by the time they did this. You circle left, this little light of mine. I mean, you can just jazz it now. I came from Georgia, raised in the Southern Baptist Church. This is right down my alley. Boy, I just nailed this thing, all right? It is just super. But there's some things on it. It has a reverse, what I call a reverse emphasis, all right? Most songs, they build all the way toward the closer. This builds in the middle and drops dead on the closer. And it's really neat. Now, for example, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Play it. But you can't tell where you are. Let it shine, let it shine, oh Lord, let it shine. We're going up now. We'll four ladies in the chain, whatever you want to do, right? And so that's the key change. Now let's get some closer and listen to this bass line. This little light of mine. There it is, I'm back up. I love this. Shine, let it shine, circle left. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, left alley man, and just slowly take that bass back off of there and just let it rock. You can hang them from the rafters. They got four pickers. That's all you need if you do it right. All right, but you gotta go learn that dude, okay? And you get to the end, and I've heard all sorts of preaching and everything else in this end of this thing. Stan Williamson put that together for Red Boot, and this is superb, in my opinion. But, anybody ever heard it? 
have to do you use it? All right, that's good. And basically, that's that's my whole stick. Is if you if you know the pop tune and you learn the music made available to you, you really got no no excuse not to use it. Now, moving over a little bit, just to go on a little bit what Elmer was talking a while ago. This I use a mixture of alternative music. I like good alternative music. I don't like bad. All right, and bad again is relative, I suppose. There are certain ones I've got. 89 hoedowns in my thing here. But I can tell you, some of them I don't use. Some of them you get tired of. I have one here. This is, I'm going to tell you straight up front, this is a terrible hoedown to call to. All right? But it's effective if you're going, if the guy's going to make announcements, if you're going to split the pot, or you, whatever. This, this gets them up there, I'll tell you. But I do it for the one word he says in a minute. And if you're going to introduce a caller to start a dance, it'll also work for that. It does eight of those. I'm thinking about go cut that out. One more time. Y'all ready for this? And then you start your introduction. Now, I've called to it. It's not the world's greatest hoedown, I'm going to tell you. I splice it and put it together and stuff. It's the theme song for... Bring it on, I think, that cheerleader movie, whatever. But it's good in its place. But it's not something I would use on a regular basis. Uh, you've got this alternative stuff. You listen and see what you like. Now, this butterfly, I like. Caribbean queen, I don't. Here's one called chains. Depends on what you like. I like rhythms, all right? And this, if you like, this has got it. If you're going to call advance, you're going to do a workshop or whatever like that, something like this doesn't get in your way. And you can just, it, it gets a little more exciting later on, but it's still not going to, and it's as good as it gets, you know, but it's something they can dance to, you can play with. Uh, that's called Chains. I have no idea where it came from. It appeared on my laptop. All right, I'm serious, and I'm starting. I'm gonna to start to disable some of my USB because I'll go call a weekend, and I'll go to lunch and come back, and I got four things on my laptop I have never seen in my life before. They just appear, you know, and that's one of them. And one of them is have you all ever heard a thing called River? Uh, it, it appeared somewhere in the last thirty days. I have no idea what got. Love it. It's great old this is traditional. Anybody got that? Do you know where you got it? Who? Now we know, now I know who snuck on my laptop at the National. All right, good. That's what I want to know. I have no idea where it came from. All right, good. Is that who cut it? That was the stuff he gave me then. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad I didn't steal it because I had no idea where it came from. Is that what it is? It's a great hoedown. I just love it. All right, super. You know, and the problem is we get to talking, and obviously, and, and, and then this. This music privacy thing, I probably shouldn't even get started on, but I'm going to, all right? Uh, but I own rhythm. I have the right to give it to whomever I wish. Tom owns Solid Gold. He has the right to give it to whomever he wishes. If you don't own a label, you don't have that right. You know, and I don't blame the guy that gets it. I blame the guy that gives it. It's like drug users and drug dealers. Drug users have a habit. Don't blame them. Drug dealers ought to go to jail. Simple as that. Enough said. All right. Anyway, I just was curious where that thing came from. Now I now I know. I remember Tommy gave it to him. Anyway, you got traditional hoedowns. You've got one like this. People love it. The dancers love it. I do not love it. I don't use it. It bothers me. Where am I? No, this is not traditional. No. No, it's one that people, the dancers like it. I'm Scottish and I don't like it. Alright? <laughs> it just, it gets in my road. Alright? And so I just don't particularly care for it. But this one, which gets in your road a whole lot more, I love it. But how can you not like it? It's just happy. But it's very difficult to call to. And uh, you don't want to do that bunch of old folks because they can't hear squat. They can't pull your voice out of that thing. That one, and when you want to, you want to get their attention. These are just, I like things that have impact. And if you go call, cause I don't know if you ever worked for a summer youth group of uh, kids, you know, and they have no choice. Their counselor says you will go. And then this old guy gets up there. He's going to put on music. You think boring, you know. So I always start off with this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
And he just gets irritated. Well, okay, let's go listen to this, you know. So, uh, but you've got to be, you got to be careful, but you've got to know it. Uh, or here's one right here. I love this. I like to do little things in mainstream, and this is how you can use the music to do it. I get up and I put this on, and I tell them there's a friend of mine from Tokyo that made this music, and I just love it. And then while I got him, I said, well, as long as we're going to use this music, let's just learn a little figure. So I teach a soul, which is a C1 basic, but I teach it to the mainstream floor, and we just kind of play with it, and I use this figure. I use music. And this is the music I used to do it with. It's just a theme thing. It's called Yagabushi in G minor, whatever. And I just love it. It's a nice little thing, and it's a Japanese hold-down. It's a great piece of music. And I just kind of, again... Using the music to set a tone, all right? And uh, you've got several different things. Oh, here's one. Here's one. going down, 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 right there. And you'll see different cuts of the same music. Sometimes I'll have them both in my laptop. One, either because it's new or I like to do it two different ways. And I'll show you that in a minute. But this is one here I just love for the intro to the head, first head figure and the first side figure. It's an old Jim Reeves thing, all right? It's an old red one. This is a thousand years old, but you can still get it. Right. Welcome to my world. Now, if you like to sing, this is a good one. You can sing. But listen to the, when it comes into the first head figure. Here we go. Let me move it on down. Listen to this. This is so cool. Welcome to my world. Head square through those high door. Now, that's eight live string players Don Williamson put on there. How can you sing over the top of that? You just can't. And he's got it on there twice. So you prompt call it and you use it. And you come out of the middle break, same way. Side square through. All the dancers will just glide to that thing, okay? But you can't use it if you don't know it's there, okay? Uh, now, the other way you can use music, and this is a story, and I'll shut the heck up here a minute. Uh, back, God, many, 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 many years ago. Uh, oh, hello. I think my microphone is dying. It's giving up the ghost. Bob Fisk and I did a caller school in Las Vegas, and we had a young lady there from Chicago. She took singing bad to an art form. She truly did, you know. And she, when she called and signed up, she said she was a C2 caller and she wanted to learn to do singing calls. And Bob says, this one's yours, Ace. And I said, <laughs> and I, so, but she was very Chicago, very bossy, very twangy voice. Everything that came around, I thought, God damn. And, and, after the first two days, Bob and I, we always went and had a drink at the end of the session at night. He said, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill the woman. I'm sure I'm going to. Because she wasn't a C2 caller. She was a C2 reader. She had all of her cards. And she was just going to read. Well, we'll fan through. And I thought, oh, God, dude, dry. And his voice was just, oh, you know. And so finally, I guess we got about two and a half, three days into this school. I am getting nowhere with this lady. And I called her by name. And I said, I got a question. She said, what? First, I said, we did. She said, well, let me ask, because no matter what you started to say, she had the answer before you ever finished. Finally, I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. She said, what? I said, I'm going to use the old trick I used to do it with people I knew from Chicago in the service. She said, what? I said, sit down and shut up. <laughs> I said, I don't know any other way. She said, okay. <laughs> so I said, I got a question. I said, do you have children? She said, I have two. I said, did you ever sing them to sleep? She said, well, certainly when they were babies. I said, did you use that voice to sing them to sleep with? She said, well, no, you sing softly. I said, God, would you do that here, please? You know, so she had a nice soft voice, but she just was off key. And I thought, well, I can't fix that. But we got the voice down. So I kept going, and I finally found a song. And I'm going to tell you what, this one would bring the house down. And she did that last day. I said, you do, you take this and you memorize it. And she did this. Oh, that's the wrong one. One minute. We're right there. Here you go. Did just like this. Side space, grand square. I see trees of green, red roses too. And she recited that thing. It just, oh, 
just nailed it. That makes what we do worthwhile. Because then she could do a single. Nobody said she wanted to sing. She said, I want to do a single. And so she found a Jack Lazarus. He did the thing for years, didn't he? He didn't sing, but he prompt called so much you just had a screaming ball. He could do my chewing gum on the bedpost overnight and hang you from the rafters. Couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. But boy, he could do a sing call. And that's what she did here. She just used the music and the song. And a lot of times, the song will overcome a bad voice or a lots of things. If the song is good, it'll get it done for you. Okay? And, uh, and so that, in that case, it worked. So I'm done. Here's my moderator. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we got a few minutes left over here, and we would be more than happy to entertain any questions that you might have. The only thing we would ask is if you do have a question, you come up and use the microphone so it will go on the on the tape. So at this time... Is there anything you would like to ask of either one of us? Yes, Tom. Microphone. That's Microphone. what a wonderful world on Chinook. Yeah, but if you want to, oh my goodness gracious! How many? How long since you used the six thirty five A? And they tell me RPM records are antiques. Yeah, it'd be worth you coming up and asking a question just to get to use that microphone. <laughs> In all honesty, we'll, we'll, you can ask us a question that doesn't have to, if you want to ask us something that doesn't pertain to using your music, ask it. They're all perfect. Yes, sir. Come. <laughs> Chris Pinkham, uh, Hillsborough, New Hampshire. I think it's important here with callers in the room to start to spend a few minutes talking about music copyrights and uh, privacy and the fact that you as recording producers own that music. Um, for several years I did music reviews and I was given a box of music every month. At the end of the month it went right back to Bill Hyman and uh, you know if I wanted one I purchased it. So I, I consider what I do at home to be my property as well and I don't like people fooling with it. So I, we have a, is, if, if, is, is Tom Miller in here today? No. If you're looking for Tom Miller, ask him to buy one of his badges. He's got a don't copy the music badge. And I, yeah, two bucks. It's worth having on your, on your lapel as you go around through the convention and anywhere else. But if you guys could address that, it's something that I consider to be very important. And I know you guys have been campaigning. And if you've gone through your convention booklet, there's an article by Bill Hyman about music copyright and privacy and who owns what. So please address that for us. Oh, great, thanks. Yes, uh, this uh, is not really, I guess we could say the the the, uh, the title of our session here is Using Your Music. So I guess we could talk about it since if you steal a piece of music, you're not using your music, you're using mine. And it's become a real, real serious problem uh, since the computers have come along and and it's so easy to to you know to take a song from someone, whether you do it um, maliciously or whether you just say, "I want that piece of music." Uh, it really affects the production of new music because when we reach the point that we can no longer, you know, at least recoup our money, it's it's kind of foolish to record square dance music. So when when we apply for a, we have to apply for a license, of course, for every song that we record. Uh, and we are, we are given a license. And that license give, license gives us the permission to make a certain number of, of that song as a square dance. It does not give us the ownership of that song. It still belongs to the writer and the publisher. It gives us the right to record it. As I said before, legally, we can't have you arrested if you if you take one of our songs and, and duplicate it and give it away. But it's a it's a moral issue. We all I'm a producer of course, but if I wasn't a producer I would like to have new music, new songs, new things that are they're current on the radio, even though some of them are not as good as the old ones, but still some of them are. 
so it, it has become a real problem as far as the answer. We, we don't have the answer other than asking you guys to don't do it. And then if you see somebody doing it, don't you leave. Uh, don't Just don't allow it to be done. And I'll let Wade comment on that. Too. Like I say, this is not really uh, part of our session, but I, I, I don't guess they'll put us out of caller lab if we discuss it a little bit. <laughs> I hope not. Um, it is a serious, serious issue, and it is just to give you a little bit of the history. When we first went to Nashville to record, it cost a hundred dollars per musician per three-hour block, plus a hundred dollars for the uh, the head musician. If you use an eight-piece band, which I did, that's nine hundred up front, and another hundred dollars uh, for that three-hour session for the engineer. So you're looking at a thousand dollars for a three-hour session. You were very, very fortunate if you got three songs out. Normally, you got about two. The cost, and that's union scale, which is what you have to pay in Nashville. It is now three fifty per musician for a three-hour session. Okay, so now you're looking at thirty-five hundred dollars for three tunes. And back then we sold anywhere from three to eight thousand copies of a record. Now if we sell a hundred, we're really, really lucky. Now you do the math. Okay? Now, I know that six months from now, we cut a tune down there at Elmer Studio called I Hope You Dance. And I know that six months from now there'll be at least a thousand callers around the world are going to use that song and about two hundred of them will have bought it. Now, I, this kind of upsets me. Now, I've said, I went to my very first Board of Governors informal yesterday. Never been to one before because I was on the board for 17 years. And I've sat there, but I never attended on the other side of the desk. But I went yesterday and I met to make some suggestions. And then I've also typed this up and I gave it to Mike to take to the past chairman's meeting. And basically just says this to the Colorado Board of Governors privacy of music issue. I would like to suggest that the Ethics Committee be given direction and authority to act on known piracy of music. Now, I don't just he said, she said a bunch of stuff, but when you know it. And when you, you know it, if you, somebody's got the music, they didn't buy it, they stole it. All right. A, I think past issues should be forgiven and forgotten. And a timeline drawn past which the piracy of music produced on Square Dance labels and specifically for Square Dancing will be intolerable. I suggest the start date be January 1st, 2009. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff happening in the past. Life's hard. you got to start a relationship from somewhere to say everything in the past. We're going to forget that. We're going to start today with a new relationship. I suggest start date be January 1st, 2009. I know it's been considered reasonably okay and sometimes even funny to share music with your buddies. But in truth, that is tantamount to theft, which cannot be condoned. All right, because it's really affecting our activity. I think that we should put teeth in the consequences that will be borne by the perpetrators. First of all, the person who accuses someone should be protected from ridicule and derision. And let's face it, it's easy to go accuse Joe Blow of stealing music. Somebody's going to go to the ethics committee and accuse me of stealing music. They better be right. All right. Now, and so it's a little bit intimidating to go do that. Nobody wants to do that. All right. Uh, and then second of all, I think the person found guilty of piracy should suffer shame by his peers. I don't think you have to do any, any fining or anything else. Just make everybody else know this guy's a thief. I don't think it'll happen twice. That's just my personal opinion. Now, I, I don't know of any other way to actually make it stop. Uh, understand that, and I'm not going to wave it around, but as an Annapolis graduate, I take honor code really, really serious. And I have no problem telling somebody that somebody else cheated. That doesn't, that's not, I don't even blink. All right. And particularly if it's going to affect our activity. Now, if I want to go really, really tacky about it and call the Harry Fox agency and this person is stealing music, they might get involved. I don't know. I don't think it should go to that. I think we can police our own activity. Why should, for example, the Royal Platinum Series, why should somebody that paid $150 for all that good music and they got somebody down here who's using it and they didn't pay a dime for it, that would make me mad. It would make me just mad and all get out. And I'm going to say something about it if I see it. Now, <laughs> it can go to the other extreme. I had a friend of mine says, won't you just print all the names of the people that bought your stuff and say thank you, and if you ain't on this list, you're going to jail. I said, I don't think I want to go to that extreme. Right? But at the same time, it's not if we try to keep it reasonable. And a couple of things are going to happen. One, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit to buy, but I, if it worried me, buy the good music. If it's good, all right, and you like it, buy it. I would love it. We do a recording session of six tunes at a time. If every call in the world bought one, 
I'm happy. You know, you can't like it all. I wish they all did, but it just isn't going to happen. But I've, I have gone around to all my friends and I said, you know, I'm going to apologize. I used to give away a bunch of comps. I used to I just comp all my, all the guys that were on the road, stuff like that. Cause I knew I was going to sell a bunch of records. Can't afford to do it anymore. And what has really been a pleasant surprise is the heavyweights that have sent me the check and bought the music. That's the ones that's buying it. All right. And, you know, because they realize this is what's involved. And if I want good music, I don't mind paying for it. And I'd like to have everybody do that way. And uh, that's my stand. Uh, just to kind of uh, bring that to a close, uh, we realized that Square Dance music uh, is has got kind of expensive. You know, to you guys, we know that. And in per- and me as a producer, I can tell you this: if if the sales were to ever go back to close to what they were at one time, my price would go down. I'm, I'm not trying to. Uh, I don't live off of Square Dance music. Believe me, I, I have a a business. <laughs> Square Dance record producing is a love that I just I just love to go into. I have a studio and I like to go in there and take a song and. And turn it into a square dance song, and hope that you guys like it enough to to buy it and use it. But uh, I'd like to see the price come back down again on records, and and it will if we can ever get back over the the hump. Right now, we're we're not even recouping what it takes us to, to produce a record, and I don't have to tell you that's not good thinking. You know, I, I'm in line for the stimulus package for <laughs> square dance. I don't know if old mama likes square dancing or not. Give us your name, Mike. It's on. Mike Seaster from Los Angeles. You know, the other thing is there's a there's a, a transition that a lot of us are going through from vinyl to mini disc to iPod to computer. And that transferring the music, the existing vinyl that you have to your computer, takes a lot of time. How many of you have made that transition and sat and recorded every piece of music? And you know the kind of time that this takes. It's a, it's a huge investment in your own time. And it's, for me, it was simpler to, to buy the CD again and stick it in the, the computer and load it and, 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 do that. Um, there were other times where I worked with other people, and I know I have the vinyl, and I was able to pick up the music, but I had the vinyl to it. And if my vinyl was crummy or it was scratchy, I just went and bought the other CD. Um, Christmas time rolls around, and everything you've got is sitting there on vinyl, and you're using your computer, and you, God, I wonder if my needle still works on my turntable. And and so the, the bottom line is. Buy the music again. It doesn't make any difference. But I think if we want to have and continue to have new music, um, we've we've got to we've got to go out there and, and buy the product. And I, I take exception with you, um, Elmer. I don't think that records are that expensive. I think the biggest problem that we have in square dancing is that when you look at the price of square dancing and what it takes to walk into a square dance hall and dance today, and compare it to what we paid in 1960, and compare the price of everything else as, a, as inflation has happened with a gallon of gas and milk and everything else, square dancing is way, way down here. We Square dancing has not kept up with inflation. We have for so many years promoted our product as being something cheap to do. Um, I don't know if you've t- taken ballroom dancing lessons recently. I, I, yeah, I, $20 an hour per person. And they dance in some of the halls we used to dance in um, because they charge enough to afford the rent on nicer halls. So I think we need to rethink the whole ball of wax here so that we keep up keep up with the price of entertainment. I mean, when you, you can't get into a ballroom dance lesson, Harley. Those places are packed. It doesn't seem to interfere with the, the people that are entering that. So I think we need to look at the whole picture, catch up with the rest of the world, and maybe we'll have a product that is comparison to, to the rest of the world. We can have the best music. We can dance in the best halls instead of trying to find something that's free and that we have to sweep the floor and, and uh, get all the juice off the floor and stuff before we can dance. So, okay? 
I think we can have a combination of both. We get our prices up, and as we sell more records, we can be more reasonable. Now, one of the things we're doing, and I know you don't know it yet because I hadn't put it up yet, but I'm establishing a website called musicforcallers.com, and so far the only two on it is ESP and Rhythm, and I'm still loading because it just takes forever to put that stuff on there. But once it's on there, how many of you guys ever had a computer crash and lost your stuff, okay? The nice thing about MP3s is if we sell an MP3 and you have a problem with you lose it or for whatever the reason is, it's replaceable for life. You don't get that with the record or anything else. That's the nice thing about electronics. It's one of the few. You know, all these time-saving devices only take four times as long as they used to take. But but nonetheless, that's one of the things we're going to try to do. Now, what we're doing is trying to set the website up. I hope we get a lot of labels in it eventually so you can go to one place. And now I'll give you a little history. Back about when we had that meeting, 25 years ago in Fort Worth, 30 years ago, whatever. Nobody trusted anybody else. And, and so we never got one center – centrally located distribution center for all score dance records because <laughs> everybody thought the other one was going to cheat them or whatever but we just couldn't logistically make it work the nice thing now is by the use of paypal we can okay now according, according to tom dillon our 60 percent of the sales are still vinyl all right so we got to press and tom does it he offers a good job he presses the vinyl if you want and you can either use him a distributor so wherever you want, whatever you want to do. But you can get the vinyl pressed, and you guys get CDs. But MP3 is a whole different situation. And five years to ten years from now, that's going to be what everybody's using unless they come up with some new other new miracle thing that we're going to do. Uh, so I would like to put this on because if you go in right now and you order, once it's loaded, you order two rhythm records, two ESP records. He has his PayPal bank account, and I have mine. And PayPal just takes the order and they send him his money and send me mine. There's no question about it. It's, 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 uh, uh, you know, we pay a 5% fee across the board for the, for the doing that. But I don't want to take credit card orders. Okay. Now, if somebody, like we have people overseas or whatever, and they said, don't want to use PayPal. I don't have to use PayPal. I don't use a credit card or whatever. Fine. Send me a check. I'm easy to get along with. I don't care. You know. I make more money if you send me a check, but for ease of use, because what we'll do is you come on there, you say, I want to order this record, this record, this record, and as soon as I get the order, I send it to you via email. Make sure your email inbox is big enough to accept 10 dB or 10 megabytes. Otherwise, you ain't going to get it. All right? I've only run across that one or two times, but that makes it a little bit difficult. But we can do this, and you get your stuff in the mail, and we try to keep the price down, but if you do... Don't give it away, please. All righty, guys. I think we're uh, out of time. I don't know how long this session is supposed to last. Well, till twelve fifteen? No. Till twelve. Okay. Well, we got a few minutes then. If you, if it's anybody else that has a question or or a comment, come forward, please. Give us your name. You know, I know why they're using these. These things are indestructible. We still have callers in Topeka that use these. And I hate it when I get up on a guest tip and that's it. I'm a new caller from Topeka, Kansas. But I've been a member of the uh, Camping Squares Association. A few years ago, we used to go camping. We used to go outside. We used to put on a tape in our car. We used to dance to that tape. We did not have a licensed caller at our camp out. And we still don't know whether it's legal for us to use recorded music at a camp out um, when we don't have a licensed caller there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it depends. Are you charging the dancers to dance? No, but that, they claim we're promoting it because other people in no the campground. No, ma'am. If you're not charging a fee, that's a social activity that's not charging you. ain't got to worry about it. So we can just go out there and dance and you just use... dance your heart out. All if right. you charge for it, you're in big poo-poo caca. Yeah, well, now that, I, now, that right. I'm, now that I'm licensed, I know that, you know, we're covered, but I didn't know before we had a licensed caller. That's a good question. Anyone else speak now or forever hold your peace? Okay. Vic? Vic Cedar, California. Sometimes, very infrequently, when you go to a dance, the dancers are so listless or they don't want to get up to dance or, or it seems whatever kind of music, 
you try to pep them up with, you just can't get them going. Do you have you've any been, you've been to my club. To, do you have any suggestions how to uh, get them going? Maybe slowly bring them up. Good point, because you're right. Sometimes you, you, you get out there and they square up and look at you like, impress me. You know, or I paid my taxes today and ain't nothing you say going to make me happy. It's tough. It really is. And sometimes I said, well, I go and Vic made a, a good point. He said, how do you finally get them there? You're going to have to build it. What you, what it's going to take is the, for, and it doesn't take long. If you're observant, you're going to recognize right up front, boy, these guys are just really down in the doldrums. And you may end up having to do love songs all night long, but the process of getting them up is a slow one, all right? Now, I didn't include page two of my little program thing I use, but I do a graph, and I do program my dances. And based on what I do is I rate my songs, one, two, three, and four. Four being a love song, three being kind of a middle of the road, two being a little bit peppy, and one hanging off the rafters type thing, all right? And... What I do is, as I once I see that, I said, "All right, I gotta have. I don't want to go from where I am to like, wow, because they're not going to go along for the ride." Okay, so I just kind of ease them up with the three, then the two, then the one, and try to get them there. And uh, but one of the ways that I've done, and I used to have this problem in Mesa, God knows all the time, because some of the folks I'm sure had passed away two or three years before them, and nobody pushed them over. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it was sometimes difficult, you know. And uh, so, but I try to look and you try to look and see what kind of floor. And I go back to classics. I go back to the old classics that come from their time and, and try to do that. New music, you're wasting your time, all right. And I find that most of the time the floor, if the floor is down, the age level will be up. And I try to go back. For example, uh, when I said, well, I go, uh I don't have it in here. I don't have it. But I do have that, uh, uh, oh, what's that thing? Oh, I said it while I go. Nobody leaves the room. Oh, every, okay, I remember that's E. E, E, E. All right. This everybody loves a lover. The Doris Day thing. People like that. It's reasonably peppy. It's not a hang them off the wall thing, but it's reasonably peppy. And as soon as you start doing it, it'll get them up a little bit. And you can do, now you can do this really, Upbeat, or you can do it laid down, all right? And so if i got a, a group of South there and they're just not quite there, I start off one like this and see if they're singing. Uh, loves a lover. If you see these ladies smile like, I recognize that, then I just start building it as I go on through it this way. If I get no reaction, I think, all right, that fell on his face. Let's try something else, all right? The other thing you do is go back to old-time the older versions of square dancing. I have some of those. I don't use very often, but like here's one. When Ken Bauer cut this song on Blue Star, his hair was black and I had some. It was a long, long time ago, but one like that they all know. You know, now if you've been around long, four ladies chain, three quarter around that. It's that first thing every morning. I call it the bathroom song. First room, first thing every morning, last thing every night. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, but that's the other thing is, but I find mainly I revert back to classics and that works now. Uh, and just give you an idea how it can, it'll work for both ages. You know, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, whatever, I went to Austin, Texas. They have the world's largest rock festival there in Austin now. It's huge. They have like a thousand bands and all these people come from all over the United States. And two of my sons are, have rock bands, one from San Francisco, one from New York. And they called and asked me if I'd get them to do a number with them. I said, well, okay, me, they can't fire me. I ain't getting paid, you know. But we got up and we were going to do a song that I did on an album about 20 years ago. And we were warming up trying to get them in. But these kids had no interest in that, you know. They were outside counting each other's piercings, I think, or something. I'm not I'm not sure. But anyway, and I said, try this. And I had a little karaoke disc that we were practicing with because they don't play my music. And the second tune on there was Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline. I said, let's just put it on. Let's just start singing at playing field in an instant. Because I don't care whether you're 18, 28, or 78, you love Neil Diamond. All right? And I find that classics will work when nothing else will. And that's what I would suggest. i tell you another song, too. I'm I'm not selling square dance records here. But if you don't have Peg of My Heart on Blue Star, you need to get it. Because that will... 
that will definitely uh, i mean when you see the dancers and they and the, you haven't started yet and they're already snapping their fingers and they're ready they're ready to go and everybody knows peg of my heart I love you. And they'll sing along with you. So it's a good song uh, if you have a little trouble kind of getting them motivated. It is. Good day. Jeff Palmer, Colorado Springs. I found that sing-alongs kind of work real well for pick people up. They know the tune. They sing along. It gets a little happier. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's another one. Right. Another one you can think of, like Peg of My Heart. And Mac Henson, when he put me on this years ago, he said, I said, can't get him out to, to dance, Mac. He said, put on Fraulein. I said, I hate Fraulein. He said, so do I, but the dancers love it. And it'll get them up. Lynn Nelson, Kansas City. I found shock value works. I drove two and a half hours to a dance one night. It was in the end of a cafeteria. I had like four squares of dancers sitting around tables visiting. I'd been around, talked to everybody, got up there, dance time, started my music, said, square them up, get your partner. And they all continued to visit. And it was like there was no music, there was no me. And I, a full minute, not one head looked up. I took the record off, picked up Hamster Dance, set that sucker down, and I cranked her up. And when that little buddy went, yee-haw, every head in the room come up. I had four squares on the floor in ten seconds flat. Now, they don't like to dance to that song at, that, at the age of those dancers, but it got their attention, and I never had any trouble squaring the floor the rest of the night. All righty. One last chance, if you have anything to, that you want to say, we're, it's 12 o'clock, we're going to eat in a few minutes. So. Listen, we, we, Wade and I both sincerely appreciate you coming and sitting in here with us for an hour or so, and uh, anytime you see us in the hallways or while we're here, if you have something you'd like to ask, please come forward and say, hey, why do you do this, or, or why don't you do that, or we'll tell you something, okay? So thanks for coming out this morning. That ends our session.